Welcome to Annunciation Radio's Faith with Reasons, the program that examines what the church teaches and why. Faith with Reasons. Welcome aboard as we come on the air live at 4 o'clock on this Wednesday. Of course, uh, we're progressing along in Lent, our Lenten journey continuing, and uh, hopefully um, we don't need to hit the reset button and start over again. Oh, For many not. of us, this is the time where we kind of really, kind of need to redouble our efforts. So hopefully, you're having an excruciating Lent. And hopefully nobody's falling off the wagon. That's true. You know? That's true. Yeah. Ron Finn and Shane Stanfield in studio, and uh, we have a, a wonderful guest this week, uh, Professor Pete Peter Sibelio from Lourdes University, uh, who heads up the uh, the master's uh, program in theology, and uh, and hopefully soon <coughs> Catholic studies. We're trying to. We're hey, if you have an extra uh, million kicking around, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, uh, so is that what it, Is that what it takes to to form a new course? Well, the the thing is, we want to do something unique in the area, and that is offer an actual Catholic studies major, we're hoping. Mm. Um, and to do that, y- yes. So I said uh, in a, in a, in a whole study program, I mean, you go get a four-year degree in yes. Catholic studies. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Um, and it, you know, we're, it would be the ideal degree if you're interested in continuing your actual vocation and work in ministry. It really would be. That's great. And it's always a pleasure to have you on. It's been a couple of months since you've uh, uh, graced our studios during uh, Faith uh, with Reasons here. Uh, Professor Pete, we, of course, listen to Bible Basics all the time. I do, too. Uh, Well, actually, uh, kind of the background. I listened to the background. We were just going over some of the questions, and I'm like, I hope I had good answers. These were really good (laughs) questions. You always talk about the park. (laughs) It's just amazing uh, how um, you you address these in two minutes' time. 93 93 ticks of the clock. Deacon Mike squared me away (laughs) on that, That kind of the hard way. That, um, you know, really after time, temperature, theme song, intro, close, two minutes, and radio time is, That's right. is 93 ticks That's of the right. clock. That's right. That's right. And uh, just just to let people know, of course, you hear uh, Bible Basics with Professor Pete every day here on Annunciation Radio. And a lot of folks are going to the website or the app, and mm-hmm. they're listening to past ones. And you've been doing these for quite a while now. And I know we got a we have a repertoire. We got we should... they'll hear a question and it might trigger another question in their own minds. And, yes, uh, certainly you can send those in any time. And... Absolutely, um, and the reason why that's so helpful is because it gives us faith with reasons material. When we get the <laughs> questions that that's they true. keep coming in, you know, we always say, "Well, this is worthy of a of an hour long discussion." And exactly. you know, a lot of those ones, I mean, we couldn't exhaust in an hour any more than we could in two minutes. Suffering prayer. Unanswered prayers, yeah, and prayers gotten, that take too long to get a, <laughs> answered, and those are just mine. <laughs> yeah, and you've gotten quite a few uh, regarding Lent. Absolutely, you know. So you're hearing uh, uh, four or five of those uh, types mm-hmm. of questions, and that's one of these topics that you can take extra time on. So that's what we want to spend time today on faith with reasons. With well, it's good that you mentioned excru- uh, excruciating because it comes from the same word we get for crucifixion. Oh, wow! So, really? Yep. <clears throat> I had no idea I was that smart. No, you have. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we're... Since Neither we're, did he. No, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, and he's pointing at you. It's couldn't confirmed. see it, but he was pointing, yes. <laughs> so since we're plugging your show, how does somebody go about submitting a question to you? There are a lot of ways. As a matter of fact, I don't really know too much about social media, so I have someone helping me. I, I'm told I'm on Facebook. Oh, I always tell folks I need facelift. <laughs> um, but uh, well, here's a Wednesday morning one. Uh, I had a facelift, and they found an ugly one underneath. <laughs> so, um, All right, I got to write that one down. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm told I'm 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 on Facebook. Of course, you can contact me at uh, Lourdes University. But I'm going to probably try and talk to you about one of our programs and insist on buying you <laughs> coffee, or you just go right to our webpage and mm-hmm. send in your question that way. Um, I am in a lot of churches. A lot of people will ask me a question or two at church. Um, and uh, it's neat because a lot of times, sometimes you can tell by the questions, right? The parents will tell their kids, go ask them that question. Go oh, ask them that go. question. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and, of course, you can send them to feedback at annunciationradio.com. Or you can send them to info at annunciationradio.com. 
Uh, just put you know, Bible Basics question in the subject line, and yep. we'll, we'll know to give it to you. Always, Absolutely. always looking for material. Well, and I love the ones that, I mean, every year we talk, again, about things like the holidays that we're going through. We talk about uh, suffering, prayer, Lent, and that's what we're doing today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So let me ask you, Shane, how's your Lent going? Lent is going well. Um, I've had uh, I've had rather dry Lent in the past. Um, I'm kind of in the middle with this, you know, not mm-hmm. um, nothing too spectacular, which I, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll take it either way, but it is it is a great time to reflect, and I've been doing a lot of reflecting this this Lenten season. Mm-hmm. Great, and uh, Peter, how's mm-hmm. your Lent going? I always think of it, ask me at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it always depends. Um, some days are a real sort of wilderness experience in a good way, and other days I'm like, man, I am just in, lost in the wilderness on keeping keeping up with it being Lent. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's always wilderness. Some days good. Some days kind of like the Israelites, not so good. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, ask me at the end of Lent. You know, not at the end <laughs> yeah. of That's day. true. That's <laughs> true. Well, I know many, um, including Dave Vacheris, uh, are doing the Exodus 90, Yeah, you know, uh, during this Lent. And uh, I, I have to be honest, I don't have the will for that. Yeah. You know, so but I really admire those that are are uh, taking those extreme measures like that. And it's not his first time. And I know there's, right. I know quite a few um, other uh, other men that have participated in that. And it's a little, it's uh, it's extreme. I mean, there's a lot of things in there that are, you know, that's, um, uh, yeah, you you really do a a good good amount of suffering. Mm-hmm. You know, when you participate in that. But uh, I think I draw the line at cold showers. I, you know, that's uh, that's something I can't. I, I can't see myself doing mm-hmm. willingly, of course. <laughs> right. <laughs> you see how far behind I was. <clears throat> I'd heard of Exodus ninety, but I thought it was a workout day. No, <laughs> I did the Exodus ninety, and I didn't lose a pound. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what are some? I've heard of that, but like, what are some of the strictures? Because I've heard of a lot of people doing that. Though. So obviously, it begins ninety days before Easter. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's much bigger bigger Lent, but it's it's quite intensive. Um, uh, I think the cold shower, showers are, are are part of that, but. I, the, one of the neatest things about this is that you have a you have a group that you associate with and meet, I believe, weekly. Yeah. So it's like a, a you know it's a support a support group. And is it just men or is it men and women? I believe it's just men, but I think there's a, there is a version of it for women. Okay. So and there may be some women that that um, you know participate participate in it know. too. But the greatest thing is is the support group. So they're meeting weekly, and they it's you know they 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 give each other support. I, I you know it's it's I, I I kind of attribute it to any type of uh, um you know um, any type of support you know team that's out there to help people because it's obviously struggles. I mean, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. but it's mm-hmm. the biggest thing is accountability. So you know mm-hmm. you're you're really dealing with um, accountability issues, and and I'm sure if somebody is struggling. You can call a friend. <laughs> yeah. Plus you've got <laughs> you know? you've got prayer support, and you've got uh, men that you can pray with. Yeah. Uh, and obviously you're you're incorporating much more prayer into these ninety days, and mm-hmm. a lot of mm-hmm. fasting, and uh, you're giving up a lot of things. And... and it's relatively new. I remember hearing about it for the first time shortly after it was developed, and it was um, national. Um, well, it was in Catholic radio, but it was mm-hmm. it was it was mm-hmm. something that was broadcast nationally, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and it might have even been the um, the gentleman that that started the you know the the program, and they were interviewing and explaining the you know the process, and mm-hmm. it was scary just to hear it. What five or six years ago when I when I heard it for the first time, it might have been been a little longer than that, but it is it is relatively it is a relatively new 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 program. So obviously, uh, whatever way you uh, kind of mark these forty days. Uh, is is a good thing, and you know we we all kind of do Lent in our own way to a certain degree, as long as we incorporate those three basic uh, you know um, pillars, you know, a prayer and, and alms giving and uh, and fasting. Uh, and when we when we talk about Lent and you know what it implies and and what it means for all of us, uh, there's so many different ways we can go with this, mm-hmm. Professor. Where mm-hmm. would you like to start on Lent for this program? Well, the um, the Exodus ninety is really interesting because um, many of the Eastern churches still in the Catholic right, and certainly the Orthodox churches, <clears throat> and we know they are churches, but they're not in communion with the Bishop of Rome. They have kind of always been doing a a longer Lent. They talk about the Triodion, 
meaning the sort of three roadedness. Mm-hmm. Uh, once we leave ordinary time, they have three preparatory weeks mm-hmm. for Lent, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and of course for them. Uh, Lent begins on a Monday, and it's 40 days consecutively, including the Sundays, uh, that ends with Lazarus Saturday, when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And then, of course, they have Holy Week as well. And so it's really this (laughs) pre-Lent, three Mm -hmm. weeks, 40 days of Lent, but Holy Week is not technically part of Lent. It's that third leg of this road uh, to Easter, hmm. and I'm I'm I wonder if that idea of the rigor of Lent and these traditional approaches <clears throat> from the East are are partly behind the whole Exodus ninety of you know it used to be you had to prepare just for the preparing for Easter, mm-hmm. and so I thought I thought that was very very interesting. And of course, um, as you know, if you have any Eastern uh, uh, right, <clears throat> uh, Catholics who are with the church, and if you have any Greek Orthodox friends, uh, you know that their fast, at least technically, we don't know if they all keep it, shh. <laughs> 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 but you know that their fast is much more rigorous. Hmm. Um, it is uh, vegan plus no oil and uh, no uh, wine except on uh, Saturday, Sunday, and the Feast of the Annunciation. Hmm. And so it's a very, very rigorous fast that they that they undergo. So did I understand you correctly that their their version of Lent includes Sundays? Yes. So it's just forty days straight, mm-hmm. um, including the Sundays. Okay. So the, obviously the major difference is, is is we exclude Sundays because yes. they're considered feast days. Yes, and that's why they'll start on they can start on a Monday, go forty days until what they call Lazarus Saturday, hmm. um, which is the day before. <clears throat> Palm Sunday. Mm-hmm. So that might answer answer some questions that folks have had, you know, because it's supposed to be a 40-day mm-hmm. period. And it's yes. like, well, you know, I'm counting the days, and it's much longer than 40 <laughs> yeah, days, yeah, you know, right. from the from Ash Wednesday. Because we won't count the Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that is, all. I think that's, I think that's, well, part of the idea is if you want to do Lent the old-fashioned way, you drop what you're doing and you go into the wilderness for 40 days. Mm-hmm. And not many of us can do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and well, so, ain't much wilderness left for uh, most of us. <laughs> no, no. And uh, you probably wouldn't have a job <laughs> mm-hmm. to, to buy lamb and celebrate Easter with. Um, or ham, of course. And so from really earliest times, the church has this sort of preparatory period and if you can't go into the wilderness, there's still this thing called an apokorisis, a going away, that you don't have a going away from your life, but spiritually you do. Hmm. And so that's one of the reasons why we talk about abstaining from all these different things in Lent is it's really a time for the spirit, not the flesh. Wow. And um, are these intended to kind of, uh, uh, obviously that draws closer uh, to the Lord, mm-hmm. uh, but are they intended to kind of wake us up or are they intended to bring us more closer in union with his crucifixion? Uh, both, <clears throat> absolutely both. Um, he begins his public ministry with 40 days in the wilderness, so even he needs that time to prepare for what lies ahead. At the same time, it's also a time of sort of penance and purification uh, for us, in the uh, early church, uh, they took sin a bit <laughs> more seriously than mm-hmm. we do. You know, I asked a student today in class, they said, so, like, how, how are you forgiven? And she just says, well, I say I'm sorry. And you just say, I'm sorry, Jesus, and that's it. And she goes, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, in the early church, you could be one and done. Mm-hmm. You know, if you sinned once, maybe in your particular church, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be out. And so we know that a lot of... Uh, a lot of converts decided to be catechumens for the longest time, mm. and it wasn't until their deathbed oh, <laughs> they, yeah. they put that <laughs> off. Yeah, that they're, <laughs> so it's almost like baptism becomes a last rites oh, type yeah. of thing. <laughs> and what would often happen in many churches is if you were going to be welcomed into the church at Easter, you would spend 40 days in the wilderness as a way of being welcomed into the church 
preparing for Easter, just as Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness. And if it was one of those liberal churches, you know, those permissive churches, and you did sin, well, then you could still be readmitted into the church. But you had to go out to the wilderness <laughs> with the oh. catechumens and be welcomed back with them at Easter. And so it's definitely this sense of, you know, we take we have to take sin seriously in ourselves. And so, like Paul says, we have to take time to sort of discipline the flesh so that the spirit can work through it. So they've excommunicated themselves yes. officially. Mm -hmm. And so they're kicked out. Um, the now, this isn't every church. Not every say, church. For instance, Tertullian left really what, you know, becomes the mainstream church because he thought that this idea of forgiveness was too permissive and he mm -hmm. kind of joins a, a montanist community away from the corrupting city. And mm -hmm. so they took it very seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the the process to get back in would be yes. essentially to go go back to go back to the the drawing board. You know, go yes. back and you're going to study yes. your yep. your faith a little a little more. Apparently, mm -hmm. apparently there was some uh, deficiency in yes, in, in, exactly. in your in your way of life. Yep. And then uh, then that was done for forty days, and then they're then they're welcome back. You know, somebody's got to sign off. This guy's okay now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be really grateful the next time I just get five Hail Marys. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, we, <laughs> yeah what people a penance. complain about confession nowadays. Right. I mean, <laughs> what a penance. <laughs> exactly, <Wow>. exactly. <laughs> Professor Peter Sibilio, our guest here on Faith with Reasons. And, uh, you know, when we talk about Lent, I thought, we got to bring the smartest guy we know. Uh, he as couldn't far as show I know, up today. There, so there are three me. of us in the studio. <laughs> and among the three of us, I think one of us, has a PhD. Yeah, I just ask questions. Yeah, uh, but you have a PhD, Peter. Yes, of course, Loyola, I think they need money. They said they're going to start putting an expiration date on it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like having to go back into the wilderness. It's like a subscription. <laughs> that is so university, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, as we as we journey through Lent once again, and it is a journey. I mean, it is. It, we have... We have a start time, and we kind of have a plan for what Lent is going to be. Right. And the church helps us kind of formulate that plan. Right? Certainly. I and, mean, and then we have an end. We, we have what, what the, the eye on the prize at the end. Exactly. Um, and I think, I think the prayer, fasting, and almsgiving really helps keep us focused. You know, we are human. We can say we don't need those things because we have Jesus in our heart, but... Well, in our daily lives, we find out Jesus knows we do need them, you know, and so he establishes so many of these things in his life really as gifts for our life 2,000 years later. I kind of like it, like it from the aspect that it's more it's more focused for mm -hmm. somebody that doesn't that doesn't yes. have a regular prayer life, um, somebody that's not used to uh, regularly giving alms. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of the, you know, the, those that are listening that, that don't know that that's basically basically a charity. Yes. Yeah. Yep. A, a charity towards somebody who's uh, who's in need, um, but it's because of the focus in, in Lent. It it is somebody as long as they're practicing us and they're and they're um, mm -hmm. and they're trying to be faithful to the you know the Lenten season. It gives them an opportunity or a focus to to think about well, what have I done today? And maybe yes. maybe I should do more. Or I could do more. Yeah, and uh, it, it's it's related to this to a word for and an idea of mercy. Mercy isn't just um, this idea. Well. I sneezed, I said, sorry, you said, no problem, right? Mercy is what mercy does. And so we have mm -hmm. both spiritual and bodily or corporal ways of almsgiving, of, of giving mercy to someone else. Mm -hmm. And tis the season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tis the season. And that's a great point, too, because <clears throat> you think of almsgiving, you think, well, you know, now is the time to give a little extra to charity. And certainly it is. But alms is much more than monetary uh, Absolutely. You know, uh, donations. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> they help, though. So if you, you, know, you want to give any, of that, <laughs> that would be fine. But, but um, it, it's so many things, like um, the Friday night fish fries. Bring someone. Mm -hmm. Buy, take, take someone out to dinner, but make it a fish fry. Mm. You know, that would be, especially if the person doesn't get out much. What a great way to give alms. Yeah. Um, those are those are fun too though those those fish fries every week I say this is the week that I'm going to come to a Friday fish fry and then oh stations and that's wor that's worthy too it's yes, not yes. quite alms mm -hmm. yep. but I think you talk about a journey I mean doing stations is really reenacting the journey that Jesus went on I think and it helps us 
think of our lives that way. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll be at uh, St. Patrick's in Bryan uh, this Friday for the fish fry doing a live <laughs> broadcast. So you're welcome to join us there. I you was, can ride along with us if you want. I was hoping there's only two seats in the van, but <laughs> we'll, pr- we'll promise not to veer too much so you don't toss around too much in the back of the van. <laughs> I was hoping for Heather Downs. <laughs> it's a little closer. But... <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, now they do have a great stations. Heather Downs does. In fact, I think they uh, not to give out any free advertising, mm-hmm. but they have uh, a meal, a sort of communal Lenten meal after station. So, hmm. oh, wonderful! Yep. Yeah, that's great. And of course, many of the parishes have, uh, like my own parish has a soup and bread. Mm-hmm. Um, with, uh, now they do their stations on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, to do that I've on Wednesdays, that. and I know at Joan of Arc at uh, Saint Joan of Arc, mm-hmm. they're in the midst of a three-week um, Lenten uh, journey mm-hmm. with uh, well two other Lourdes University people, Patricia Odie Murray oh, yeah, and yeah. uh, Dr. Think, ben Brown. I think she's yep. speaking this um, this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that was just announced. She was and there. They're, so they're serving soup, mm-hmm. and then they bring the speaker on. And that's um, uh, if if I. If I remember correctly, that is um, well. It's obviously communal, but it's like potluck. So people are yes. bring, somebody are bringing their own their own soup and yes. sharing it. Yep. So <clears throat> I know I've heard Dr. Brown. I think I think he mentioned that. I think Pat did too. She was just mm-hmm. she was just in the studio doing a recording. Okay. Um, they never have me at anything involving bread or carbs because they make you sleepy and I make you sleepy as it is. <laughs> don't, so, don't mix the two. <laughs> they, you can't mix the two. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that. I nodded off for a second. What did yeah. you say? <laughs> So, uh, Peter, uh, give us a, a few things that we might not know about Lent. The word Lent itself, first of all, I, I want to compassionately correct a student. It has nothing to do with Lent, right? <laughs> oh, the, the fuzzy on the shirt. <laughs> yeah. And um, the word itself, Lent, L-E-N-T, is neither a Greek nor Aramaic nor Hebrew word, so you won't find the word Lent um, until we get to Old English times, and it comes from our word <clears throat> or our same root for lengthen, because mm-hmm. the uh, days are lengthening, and Easter is associated with the rising sun in the east. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> it really is a wonderful way of saying, well, we have these different pagan cultures, and they're smart enough to understand that life is coming back into the world, and so we'll take some of their terms and bring them into the church hmm. and have Lent and Easter. Um, but the concept of Lent, obviously, is biblical. Forty days flood. <clears throat> I know in one part of Genesis it's 150 days, but that's another show. <laughs> you know, a little teaser there. <laughs> and Noah's packing list is a little different yeah, than different. Yeah. Like, what's he supposed to bring and how long is he going to be gone? That's a whole show. <laughs> Um, but of course, 40 days, uh, uh, for a, a version of the flood, 40 years or a generation in the wilderness, uh, for the Israelites. Mm-hmm. And one of the words for generation, <clears throat> one is one word for generation in Hebrew is door, uh, mm-hmm. not the kind with the knob. And another word for generation, 40 years is Toledo. Oh, but really? They pronounce it Toledot. <laughs> huh. And then, of course, <clears throat> Jesus has 40 days, a fast for 40 days, as does Moses, as does Elijah. <clears throat> and so that number 40 and 40 days quickly becomes associated with preparation in the early church. And at the Council of Nicaea, <clears throat> better known for our creed and this idea of Jesus of the same essence or the Son being of the same essence as the Father— also <clears throat> talks about this period of 40 days of preparation before Easter that we finally sort of settle on because early church fathers are saying it should be 40 hours, it should be 40 days, and so Nicaea sort of sets that in stone. Hmm. And so uh, Nicaea, uh, what kind of time frame? It's 325. 325, okay. Well, actually, 424. No, wait, that's the time. Okay. <laughs> that's the time, but, Stop uh, looking at the clock. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I, I guess that was the, the, the question that, that came to mind when you said that Lent is an, is an old English term because yes. obviously that had been much later. In so, Germanic. Okay. Right, and so you've got to get well into German tribes uh, who kind of take over for the Romans until mm-hmm. you start to, get, start to get anything that sounds similar to our modern English of Lent and Easter, but the concept... Right, goes all the way up 40 days, 40 years, 
That's Old Testament, that's Moses, Elijah, that's Jesus, that's New Testament, and early church recognizes it right away as well. And it was it was definitely a practice. Yes. Um, it was... Um, um, it was settled as yes. a practice in, in, in 325, 325 and it least, just yeah. wasn't called anything like Lent. Well, it was called a number of things, the Great Fast <clears throat> or the Great Forty, Okay, um, mm. which you still find in the Orthodox churches, mm. right? You'll hear them call it the Great Forty or the Great Fast um, or sometimes just the, uh, the preparation, depending on, again, how you were keeping it and what you needed it for. Did you need it to come into the church? Did you need it as uh, repentance for sin? Right. This is our season for doing all of that. Well, this is good. I'm, I'm, I feel smarter already. Yeah, I know. Yeah, this is awesome. Well, see, I feel bad because <clears throat> at, at Christmas time when we did Advent, you, you asked me about the history of Advent. And I said, well, once we get December 25th settled on, I think history stops. I, I don't know anything <laughs> <laughs> after that. <laughs> I know that Santa Claus, there really is a Santa. That was one of our questions. Mm-hmm. It was more, more Christmassy. But yeah. There was mm-hmm. a St. Nicholas. Mm-hmm. And it's those German tribes again that will shorten St. Nicholas to Santa Claus instead of Nikolaus. It's always Germany. I mean, I'm it, telling you. It, <laughs> well, after Nicaea, the, the Aryans kind of got kicked out. And so they kind of... Many of them will go to the outskirts of the empire, but that's right where the German tribes are. So when Rome falls, mm-hmm. there right, pick up the, the German tribes think they're Christian, but a lot of them are Aryan Christians. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have the problem with Arianism oh, okay. all over again. Oh. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> go back to the drawing board. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're spending time in the desert of our soul, so to speak. Uh, yeah, yes, indeed. Exactly. Because, um, like we said, we can't drop everything. Mm-hmm. And go into the wilderness, and the church understands that. And so we have a sort of spiritual journey in the wilderness <clears throat> that can be difficult, right? The wilderness is a place of testing. We remember that from the first reading on Sunday, Masa and Meribah. <clears throat> Masa means test, and Reeve is quarrel or argument or even lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so it's a place of testing, a place of arguing. But it's also a place of purification, right? Jesus is there. The angels minister to him. He's tested, and yet he, there's a harmony even with the wild beasts. And so it's a time of purification as well as testing. Wow. So is there anything, um, uh, is there anything with regard to um, Lent um, that was, was, was really changed um, or modified as time as time went on, I mean, uh, 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 I, 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 things are always refined, of, of course. But yes, they are. Well, well, that's something that we can pick up on the other we side. We have commercials. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they didn't have them in Lent back no, in the day. <laughs> yeah. They did, but they were hard to you know, read. <laughs> and you had to unscroll them, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. It was very difficult. A lot of rocks involved. Uh, it's uh, Faith with Reasons and uh, Professor Pete. Peter Sibilio in studio. We're talking Lent. And uh, we're going to be right back. Carry the home missions close to your heart by downloading the free Glen Mary Home Missioners mobile app. Glen Mary brings the Catholic faith to rural parts of Appalachia in the south where it is not effectively present. The free Glen Mary app is a one-stop shop to access daily reflections written by missioners, prayer resources, and information about mission in the United States. The app is available for iPhones and Androids. To download, search Glen Mary in your mobile device's app store or visit glenmary.org slash app. That's glenmary.org slash app. Hi, this is Father Nathan Cromley, the founder and president of the St. John Institute. I'm so excited about what's going on. We have an opportunity today to form young people with the savvy of doing great business while at the same time the devotion of living great lives of faith. At the St. John Institute, we take young people who want to live an exceptional life and do something with meaning for the rest of their life, and we empower them with a deep personal formation to integrate faith, business, prayer, community life, and culture. At the St. John Institute, we'll be giving out graduates who want to work opening new ministries for the church or bringing life to existing ministries. Learn more at stjohninstitute.org. That's S-A-I-N-T johninstitute.org. Have you ever wondered how to better understand the scriptures? 
What does the Bible say to us in our day-to-day life? This is Peter Sibelio, the Bible teacher at Lord's University, and I'm happy to answer your Bible questions here on Annunciation Radio. Listen for Bible Basics, a daily feature to help you understand Scripture and how to apply it to daily life. Email your questions to me at feedback at annunciationradio.com and listen for my answers to your inquiries. Now, back to Faith with Reasons, here on Annunciation Radio. Hey, welcome back here. Uh, Shane Stanfield with Ron Finn. And uh, as you just heard on the commercial, we're blessed to have Dr. Um, Pete Sibelio, our, our, our in-house uh, professor from uh, Lord's University, yeah. and it's great to be here. And a little plug for his uh, his daily program that we hear at uh, we hear at uh, uh, an Annunciation Radio daily um, yeah, Bible I'm, Basics. I'm going to start saying you get to give me homework, right? Because mm-hmm. I was I was telling Ron some of these questions. I I've, I've got to go to the library. I've got to get commentaries. I've got to get dictionaries. I mean, I better check that before I say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, 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 Ron and I have a ton of questions, and we just thought it'd be great to have you in to answer all of these questions. And of course, then you provide answers, which give you know room for more questions. I so. hope they're right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put yeah. a little shingle outside yeah. the door here. The yeah. doctor is in. You know. Yep. And... Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So we were talking um, uh, about um, things that we may not know about Lent, and um, and we got into a question right before the break uh, regarding um, what what aspects of Lent may have changed over the years because we we established that Lent was um, was was somewhat made official or mm-hmm. um, uh, or, or defined um, uh, Council of Nicaea yeah. so three twenty five mm-hmm. we didn't pick up the the uh, the name Lent. Until, until much uh, later. Until I, much later. I don't know the the dates for those. I mean, who's to say when something becomes English? Mm. You know, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. when does it become acceptable? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I have that question with my students mm. <laughs> all the time. So, to, so to recap, Lent is an is an old English term. Yes, yes. Yeah. It, it's Germanic in its or not not the practice, but the word has to do with lengthening, just like Easter has to do with. The uh, rising of the sun in the east. So to pick up where we left off, what what aspect of Lent um, or what aspects of Lent have um, have evolved that you that you're aware um, since um, since its be, its beginning? Well, I could joke and say nobody got to go to San Diego back in Uh-oh. the day like you are. But in a way, um, <laughs> just I'm a little, jealous. Little, I admit that. Little insight. We were we were discussing off air, uh, um, you know, spring break uh, travel plans beginning this Friday. So uh, <laughs> I think, uh, well, mm-hmm. I, maybe maybe there'll be room. Maybe we can take you along. I don't. I don't know. No, I wouldn't. I, I one I could. I'm sure I couldn't afford it. And two, it, it would be tough to, <laughs> you know, it'd be tough to come back. I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's so gorgeous. Um, but along those lines um, uh, about things that change, you know, we we are not as quite as strict mm-hmm. as as we were before, and and more sort of personal reflection on what is best for you to do, the like, individual. Yes, yes, even in the East, where as we mentioned, the fast is is much stricter. Even there, <clears throat> they have this idea of conscience. The moment you become proud of what you're doing or the moment you look down on someone else you're actually obliged by church rule to stop the fast Hmm. oh right and so there is even where you have a stricter fast in place this idea of conscience and individual reflection that really grows uh in uh during lent and of course you also have um with protestantism a, a sort of shying away of some churches from uh, emphasizing Lent because, in my opinion, a bit incorrectly, they view any sort of initiative like that mm-hmm. or even church calendar, you know, as too much of your own initiative and not relying on grace. But we know we have to cooperate uh, with grace. And so Lent is a grace. So it hasn't been too long ago, Ash Wednesday, I remember hearing talks mm-hmm. about um, how Protestants would look down on Catholics with wearing the ashes because it's more of a pride thing. You know, it's 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 largely misunderstood. You know, why why do you want to advertise um, something like this? It's it's making you look pious when you obviously aren't. Right. You know, the, the, this sort of thing. So I can I can kind of see um, I can kind of see where you're where you're going or where you're coming from. And it kind of shows us even within 
denominations that will allow the the sort of practice <clears throat> or allow Lent, right? There's that suspicion of anything that you yeah. know, we could see. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think technically, I think most Lutherans will still keep Lent. Mm-hmm. Most Methodists do. It is still on the Anglican calendar. I know, I think even some Baptists will acknowledge a 40-day period. But again, that's partly, <clears throat> you know, in, in America, we tend to think, well, Christianity is basically Catholic and not Catholic, mm-hmm. Protestant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we forget that all of the churches in the East, including those in communion with Rome, of course keep Lent. Mm-hmm. And so kind of the question is, well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> From, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, even if it is, if it does become a bit more personal and reflective. But with the things like Exodus 90, and that kind of look that we did in the first uh, half hour of mm-hmm. the Eastern churches, right? You do see a sort of resurgence of traditional approaches to Lent as well. Well, this what you mentioned about it, the Eastern church reminds mm-hmm. me of um, how many times I've heard priests talk about, and, and this is our what I see as a similarity East and West, mm-hmm. um, because you said in the East, you know, you would be you would be encouraged to stop your fast because you've you've right. gotten into this this yes. this area that is non productive. It is that is truly prideful. Sure, it's it's prideful, but you know the how many times have you heard a priest will say, you know, if you've if you've given up coffee for Lent mm-hmm. or you've given up chocolate or something, and you know. You know, so many so many days or so many weeks into Lent, you become the grouch that nobody wants to be around. You know, because right. you know, and right. and it's and it's and you're actually putting yourself into a circumstance that's not good for you or good for others. And that would be a reason to you know absolutely stop or back <clears throat> off something. Like you know, this. and I think we we really have made some sort of common sense understandings that we do want to discipline the flesh. But God isn't trying to kill us in Lent if we, for medical reasons, oh, yeah. cannot fast. Yeah. Right? And the church now says that once you reach a certain age, you are you are released from the you know, the fast for, for, for medical reasons. And it only, um, only begins at fourteen too. Yes, uh, 14, exactly. fourteen or sixteen. Right. I think I, it's fourteen. I think it's yeah. fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's fourteen. So you're not going to drag the whole family into it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So why do they call it a fast when it goes so darn slow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Mark. You know, I'll bet that. I'll bet. Yeah. There's. I can't. Like nistia, or I guess depending on which pronunciation we use, uh, nistia. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that doesn't sound at all like fast to me, and I can't think of um, a Latin word. <clears throat> so I'm betting, I'm wondering if that's another one of those. Someone call in and help us here. I never took old English. <laughs> Are you going to phone a friend? Yeah. Um, there you go. I took German, but I forgot. Well, I forgot more than I remember. <laughs> So we've stumped P- Professor Pete here. Like Which it. is and pretty easy to do. We may so. need to go commercial while he goes to the library and gets a book. No, well, I, I got a computer. We can. I don't think I would make it back in time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, the etymology now, the etymology of etymology is a true word. Oh, um, hmm. and that's both. Those are two Greek words, so I'm pretty sure there. But you know, yeah, I'm not sure where the English word fast comes from. I know it's a biblical concept. We have it in Hebrew. We have it in Greek. Um, <clears throat> and we talked about Moses, forty day fast. Of course, Moses seems to fast three times for forty days. Hmm. He, when he's given the law, he fasts for 40 days <clears throat> um, before he goes down and reprimands the Israelites for the golden calf. Uh, in one place, we're told he fasts before he does that. And then <clears throat> in another place, we're told he fasts after he does that. Hmm. You know, and so I think that's why Moses is mad about the golden calf. He was hoping for ground beef. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> all you people, I got to go 40 more days without food here. <laughs> Well, I think this is a great segue for another for another question. Oh, um, let's talk fasting, okay? Because fasting can mean a, a lot of things. Like yes. I mentioned before, it could give up coffee, it could give up sweets, whatever the case may be. But if you're if you're doing if you're doing fasting, it was in, it was intentionally to go without food. Yes, to a absolutely. certain extent, either 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 completely or or uh, right. you know. Uh, all right, so we'll 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 leave that there, and then maybe mention at this point in time the Benedictine fast, where you only have one full meal per day, right. Right. and and mm-hmm. um, and you can you can have two two, like, two snacks, right. and they can't they can't equate to a one full right. meal or something along that exactly. line. So let's discuss fasting. Well, again, it's part of that idea of a going away 
that apokoresis. Mm -hmm. um, you go away from your regular life, maybe physically, to go into the wilderness. Um, <clears throat> but you also go away from anything that sort of keeps you bound up and try to make it work for you. I mean, few things are as intimate as eating and as impactful as eating. <clears throat> you know, you are what you eat. We always say we consume the body of Christ to become the body, body of Christ. Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go without food for one day and you will really notice it. Mm -hmm. um, even change your eating habit to say it's just one full meal. Um, but I know <clears throat> I've been trying this Lent, trying, <laughs> not always <laughs> succeeding, of picking one day and because the doctor said I could probably go 40 days without eating any food and it would be tough on the farmers, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, they notice a drop in their income, yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, I try to do, you know, one day where nothing more than maybe a protein shake mm. and a little bit of maybe a piece of fruit or some vegetables. That's it. I am thinking about it two days in advance. Mm. And I am very conscious of it that day. And if we could just use that, if I could just use that to think of Jesus and make him fill my emptiness. Oh, right? yeah. Remember, just before he talks about blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, he hungers and thirsts for 40 days. Mm. You know, he can talk that talk because he walks that walk. Mm -hmm. So it's not just <clears throat> a going away. Mm -hmm. It's a refilling with something better. So you mentioned before you could probably go for 40 days. You were joking. Yeah. I can't, you know, <laughs> well, people can't see the look on your face. But, you know, but there are people that, yes. that do that yep. and they do it successfully. And it's not necessarily unhealthy. But. At the same time, when they do that, boy, are they focused on something? Sure, mm -hmm. yeah, they are absolutely focused. On I mean, something. can you imagine? I, I can't, I, I, I can't, I can't wrap my head around that about you know not eating anything. But you know, you're allowed mm -hmm. to, you're allowed to have water because yes. you have to you have to have water to survive. Exactly. But it is it is physiologically possible for someone to to just turn off the yes. the mouth, <laughs> you know, and the intake. You, I know that I am incredibly focused on those days. I'm not always thinking about Jesus, but I'm always having that hunger. Mm -hmm. And after I, you know, take a breath, I'm like, well, it should be a hunger for Jesus. That's what this is about. Yeah. Um, and so you are what you eat and you are what you don't eat, too. And we remember that in Lent. <clears throat> so it seems like uh, it seems like an, an, an excellent way to 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 gain that grace, because if your focus mm -hmm. is on Christ and what Christ offered and you're trying to participate in what he has done himself, um, not saying you're going to do the entire forty days, but you're you're attributing at least one day yes. to to mimic what he did in, in you know in the desert. You're going to be able to um, um, a glean a grace uh, in order to, in order to be able to do that. If nothing else, but just to sh shift your focus, it really does. It is it makes a big difference. Incredible. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, I'm I get nervous. You know, if Tuesday is my day to to really do with less, Monday night I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I better have a big snack before I go to bed and stuff like that. Um, Preparing for the preparation. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And uh, another part of uh, the traditional fast is no secular entertainment, no secular music. Mm. And so some churches are throwing in um, social media oh, and yeah. uh, things like cell phones. Um <clears throat> Radio is always allowed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> but, you. Thank you. <laughs> but imagine if we, if we, you know, maybe we just followed a Benedictine uh, fast. Mm -hmm. But we said, I, re you know, I remember a time when cell phones did not exist. Mm -hmm. Not too and, long ago. <clears throat> really? No. And yeah. now if I forget mine, I am almost saying a bad word. Uh, <laughs> yeah. slamming on the brakes, how our lives have turning changed. around yeah. and racing back mm -hmm. home. And few things are as terrifying as, oh, my God, where's my cell phone? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, maybe we could take a break from that mm -hmm. during Lent. Think how freeing that would be. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, imagine we, if you even just did something simple like power your phone off. 
so that every time you pick it up to use it, oh, i got to power it back on. That's an interesting thing. You know, that might thing. just remind you that, oh, that's right, I'm trying to not use it as much. Could yeah. I use my cell phone to do nothing but call people? Mm. Where the only way I would use it would concept. be to talk to another human being. So even, I'm not going to be too, you know, hard on myself. I will still use my cell phone. But I have to try to actually interact with another human being, hopefully in a polite way. And, and texting it. doesn't count. No. <laughs> Imagine, I mean, talk about a fast that would fill you with something better. So we all know very well, you know, it wasn't too long ago that we didn't have cell phones. But no. when cell phones came around, all you could do with them is talk. Yes, you exactly. Know I mean? mm-hmm. so, and uh, I still, I mean, I think I could do it because uh, that's all I... <laughs> I, someone keeps, they keep trying to teach me how to text. I, I guess you have to hit those numbers very fast because, you know, A, B, and C all rest on the number two. So like you have to hit the two twice fast to get to B or so. See, <laughs> yeah. I could definitely do this. <laughs> is what I'm saying on my nice little flip phone. Pretty oh good. yeah. 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 Good. Now, um, some of the students might start passing those quizzes. I'm telling you. <laughs> because <laughs> Now, let's talk for a minute about the Stations of the Cross, because obviously deep biblical roots yes. behind this Yes, devotion, everyone. And uh, people participate in it in a variety of different ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, uh, again, in the early church, you not only uh, inherit this concept of fast and preparation from Judaism, you also inherit this concept of pilgrimage. Well... In fact, Jesus is in <clears throat> Jerusalem for the Passover and then the, the seven-day Feast of Unleavened Bread, um, which was associated with the barley harvest. And then mm. they had the Feast of 50 Days Later. Most folks don't recall that Pentecost was actually a, a Jewish feast mm. um, <clears throat> that celebrates, one, the giving of the, the Torah to Moses, and two, the wheat harvest, mm. right? <clears throat> and then the other pilgrimage feast— would be in the fall. If you uh, ever see booths out on people's lawns in the fall, Mm -hmm. uh, probably (laughs) it could be some sort of yard work. (laughs) But, but of course, there's the Festival of Booths, uh, Mm -hmm. which would require Jewish men of age to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem in the fall, um, commemorating when Israel had to uh, live in booths in the wilderness Mm -hmm. and the wine harvest. And so we inherit this idea of pilgrimage. So let's drop what we're doing and first spend 40 days in the wilderness, but then walk to Jerusalem. Oh, let's just, do that. Just add that on to the... Yes, yeah. <laughs> because, well, we want, to re- we want to put our feet in the footsteps of Jesus. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I can't quite make it this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that's, you know, that's, a, that's a little bit too much. I can't do that. <laughs> And when Jerusalem, of course, the Romans uh, uh, destroy most a uh, good portion of Jerusalem, the Jewish temple, and uh, it is no longer in Jewish hands uh, after AD seventy. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you have um, you have n- not only Christians there but Muslims. And when relations aren't too good, well, you don't have protection. No, oh, yeah. To make a pilgrimage. And so I think it was St. Francis, but a lot of, maybe he standardized them. But you have this idea, well, if you can't make it to Jerusalem, we'll go on pilgrimages inside our church. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. And so we, we will have stations of the cross throughout our church inside for those who can't make it to Jerusalem and do the actual footprints. I heard something similar to this. Um, we we had a, a a pilgrimage to Italy at Christmas, and this guy gets around. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it was, <laughs> I mean Italy, it was, it was, San Diego. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky if I get to Rossford. I would I would go back to Italy before I go to snow, and that's another story. But <laughs> in the, the, but but one thing that we witnessed there is actually brought part of um, of Jerusalem. Back yes. back to Italy. Yes. So so we went and we actually scaled the the holy stairs, and oh, wow. and and, uh, and that's just a that's a that's a separate building from St John Lateran. But yes. but you go over and you can you can sca- you, you can scale the stairs on on your knees, of course, and and 
and that was uh, that was a way for them to bring Jerusalem back right. back exactly. to the to the to the holy city because people couldn't make that pilgrimage, but they could go and they could they could you could pray at these stairs, they could scale these stairs on their you know on their knees, mm-hmm. and um, and participate in in in, um, in 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 that because that was obviously part of 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 Christ's crucifixion. And so much of what we're talking about, you know, really has this theme about, of course, we are spirit and God is spirit, but God understands that we are also flesh. And so we need things like fast, like Eucharist, like stairs and stations, not because God needs them, but because God knows we need them. Yeah. Uh, Because that's where we are now. And that's how we get where we're going. <laughs> so we were we were talking about the the stations. We also mentioned in, in in the first half of the of the program that there are there are many, if not most, if not all of the of the local parishes participate in this weekly during Lent. Yes, it, it, to some to some extent. To some extent. Yes. So um, uh, that is that is something that we could do in in participating in is is a form of mm-hmm. of. Um, of pilgrimage yes, to participate absolutely. into that into that's that that's really what they're there for you know we don't we don't have three pilgrimage festivals like Jesus's Judaism uh the gospel of John really points and that's how we kind of uh know it's really from John's gospel that we think that Jesus's public ministry was 3 years because it mentions a number of passovers and it mentions a number of these pilgrimage festivals so that his ministry must have been more than one year, mm-hmm. right? Um, we don't have to do that, but yet we have every opportunity to do that. Um, <clears throat> and something I've noticed, too, is a lot of churches, uh, I think a lot more people, are making wonderful use of the uh, sacrament of penance. Just my own observation. I know that on Saturdays, uh, <laughs> I could, you know, co- confessions would start at 3.30. If I got there at 3.45, there might be one person in front of me. Now, if I don't get there at like 3 o'clock, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know if I if I will be heard. Oh, yeah, yeah. The um, line is long. And closely associated with that, Eucharistic adoration. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I, I really think we have a lot of opportunity to do that. Um, it's not just Holy Thursday. Uh, anymore. I've noticed a lot more people, I think, are taking advantage of Eucharistic adoration. And that's certainly something else that I know I should be doing more. And I know with the diocese, well, really the whole church's three-year uh, kind of dedication. Exactly. Uh, you know, <clears throat> rediscovering the Eucharist, learning more about the Eucharist, uh, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and, and being more engaged. Eucharistic living, revival? Yeah, yeah. In, in that revival. Um, what's a perfect way to really dedicate our Lent focused exactly. on the Eucharist? Exactly. Mm-hmm. We fast from th- some things, but we take more of the real bread from heaven mm-hmm. in. Um, and uh, it's funny you mention, I have a, I, there's, no, <clears throat> there's no trivia in the Bible, okay? It's all important. Um, <laughs> but <clears throat> what's one thing <clears throat> that all four Gospels talk about? And now it's like people say, well, they all mention the same thing. Well, no, they don't. No, you're right. So, <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> and some, I mean, some accounts are only in one gospel. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like I know my students are shocked to, and they still get it. <laughs> we do it in class. We do we, see the we, passion uh, in all. Abs, bingo. Yeah. Because Paul will say the gospel is, and he doesn't tell us much about Jesus' life at all. Mm. He says the gospel is this good news. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. <clears throat> and so our first capital G gospel, Mark, starts out with, well, here's where the gospel begins. Mm. Isaiah the prophet is a nice lead in for John the Baptist. And John the Baptist says, it's not me. It's here's who's next. And here comes Jesus at age 30. Mm-hmm. He says, kind of like... Um, Paul Harvey, you know, that's the rest of the story. (laughs) Uh, Boy, it's good to talk to people who've heard of Paul (laughs) Paul Harvey. Good day. (laughs) Yeah, it's like we did in our our wheelchairs are here, right? We have Paul Harvey. We have no cell phones. (laughs) Um, But you're absolutely right. So all Gospels are going to give us passion, death, and resurrection. All four Gospels. The only other thing that shows up in all four Gospels is, is Jesus Jesus feeding 5,000 people Mm. where he says, where the Gospels all say, you know, he takes bread 
And looking up to heaven, he gives thanks and breaks it. And so the feeding of 5,000 ties right into his Last Supper and the institution of the Eucharist. So you could say it really, that one thing they all have in common are Jesus's last days, Hmm. passion, death, and resurrection, because Last Supper is prefigured right in the vocabulary of the other one thing that all four Gospels have, and that is the feeding of 5,000. And Interesting. For those uh, Protestants that that say that you know the the, the Eucharist or the um, well yeah the Eucharist isn't isn't is it in the Bible um, the the Mass isn't in the Bible when you when you hear the the term of the breaking of the bread yes that, absolutely that, that that that's 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 Mass going on right there and I mean if we say well Luke writes a generation or two later well he says he's talking about things that happened right after (laughs) Jesus died, and Emmaus. They recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread, Mm -hmm. both the breaking open of Scripture, part one of our liturgy, and Mm -hmm. in the breaking of the bread, part two two of the liturgy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And even before we have written Gospels, Paul says to the Corinthians, okay, I had to learn this, and Paul usually won't say that, right? Usually he says, God told me I didn't have to go for any sort of tutorial, Mm -hmm. God told me this, right? He says, look, I learned this, Jesus's Last Supper, yeah. the institution of the Eucharist, and the words that we use at Mass today. I taught it to you. Now you're misunderstanding it, so let's go over it again. Yeah. <laughs> this is what it is, <laughs> and this is what Jesus said. And there you get the only sort of detail from Jesus's life in Paul. Wow. Okay, the only time he'll talk about Jesus's life is when he talks about Last Supper. Hmm. And he gives us the words pretty close to exactly what we use today. And he said, this was already going on yeah. way back when I joined. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and now you're messing it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he was the convert. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, we don't really have time to do Paul, but he sees this as where his Judaism should be. Like where God wants us all to be going. It was the uh, it was the evolution yes. of Judaism. Yes. Yeah. Which there's a lot of Judaism in the in the, in the Catholic faith. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. We lose a little because of the loss of Jerusalem, and that's no longer a church hub either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been a quick hour. Uh, obviously, they always are. <laughs> this is a great opportunity and a great discussion for us all to have an intentional Lent. Yes. You know, we tend to be in our own little vacuums and, and we're doing the things that we want to do. Like, Lenten you know, rhymes I already, with intention. I already pray enough, so mm-hmm. when, well, you can take your prayer into different directions and you mm-hmm. can you can uh, spend more time reflecting on what you're praying. There's various ways that you can practice these three pillars. I hope I get to come back in Easter. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. You know. We can squeeze you in. Absolutely. Well, like you said this morning, it's, you know, ten. I'm going to lose 10 pounds and I have only a 15 to go. So. <laughs> 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 Professor Pete Peter Sibilio, thanks for joining us on Faith with Reasons.